Over the last 30 days, I have completely cut caffeine from my life. This for me was absolutely crazy uh, based on my previous consumption. But the whole objective of this was I was way too bloody dependent on it. And I really wanted to get control of that and have it be more of a tool in my life compared to a crutch. And the, really the purpose of this video is to break down my process and to make it as actionable as possible for you so you guys can test out the same thing in your life. All right, as a quick table of contents, we're gonna be talking about the context, so like my experience with this, um, my objective of all of this, my process, my results, and then how you guys can apply this in your life and be successful. And as a quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional, nor do I want to act like one. I'm merely just trying to do various experiments on myself and test things out to hopefully become the best versions of myself. So whatever sticks, I'm gonna be keeping. Whatever doesn't stick, I'm not gonna be keeping. But any of the learning that I have along this process, I wanna share it for you guys so you can hopefully get that same value in your own life. First, let's talk about a little bit of my background with caffeine. So it really starts from high school and then goes up to now. I'm 22 years old. So high school, I'm talking energy drinks and coffee, I'm like instant coffee. Please don't try energy drinks. They are terrible for you. I was just undereducated. Then it shifts over to university. That's where the bulk of my experimentation came in. So I was doing drip coffee, espressos, bulletproof coffees. Those are freaking awesome. Then we have caffeine pills. When my stomach used to start hurting after like two cups of coffee. And then the last thing I've experimented with was Tim Ferriss's tea cocktails. Mm, they are just like incredible. <laughs> like I'm talking four hours, you're just perfectly in the zone. Also, to let you guys know, this is not my first attempt with this experiment. The experiments I'm gonna be showing with you guys are not always gonna be perfect. Um, the first one I did, it got up to like two weeks in and I just completely broke. So if you're not successful on your first time, it's okay, just try again. The objective. This entire experiment kind of spurred out from a YouTube video I was watching um, from Alex Becker. He was talking about how he doesn't really consume caffeine anymore. And he only has a coffee like here and there. I think, he, I think he mentioned it was like once a week. And the idea is he uses it as a tool. And that was really exciting for me. I was like, hmm, I wonder, I, I wonder if I can do that. And then for some other reasons as well, um, I kind of have a messed up gut. I had this Viome test and my gut lining is just like not the best. So it's recommended that I cut down on my coffee. Um, again, I wanted to make it not a crutch in my life, more so a tool in my life. And then I actually wanted it to be efficacious, like actually have some effect on me because I would really consume coffee and just be like, hmm, okay. Now I can tell you when I consume coffee, I'm like off the wall. Not off the wall in a bad way, but more so like I am not tired anymore. Yeah. so just actually had my first cup of coffee and holy guacamole, I am off the wall. Um, this is how I feel inside. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm just like. So, the process. Ooh, <laughs> it was a fun one. Um, so I'm talking the first week is just gonna be like hell on earth. You're just gonna be like, oh my God, what is happening to me? I promise it gets easier. Um, I'm gonna give some techniques as well to make it better. The second part is like weeks two to week three, you're just like, ah, okay. This is getting easier. Maybe I can do this. And then week four, I promise you're just gonna be like coasting. <laughs> it's just, you're gonna be like, oh, coffee? What, what, what is coffee? 
However, there's gonna be like times where you're gonna get like a little surges, like oh, ooh, ooh, I could, I could use a coffee. Like I'll see a coffee sign, and still now I'm just like, oh, I need coffee now. <laughs> um, but this goes away, and your tolerance will be gone at this point. So, how did I set myself up for success during these periods? The first thing that I did right away was in my house, I took all of my coffee, all of my coffee accessories and hid them somewhere outside of my kitchen. You can go to the extreme of throwing them out. I don't recommend that because you're going to reintroduce it back into your life, but just out of sight, out of mind. Or you can also make the rule for yourself. If you're going to consume coffee, you have to go to the store, buy the coffee, come back and then make it that's the only way so that's like what i do with like junk food as well or what i do with alcohol as well i make it like harder for myself i won't have any of that crap in my house um oh, nah, alcohol right now i'm not doing and uh, a dear friend said to me that if it's in your house either you will consume it or someone you love will consume it so if you don't want to consume it yourself and if you don't want anyone in your family to consume it just cut it just just you can go to the store it's it's not that far away you probably have a car probably can get on public transit you'll be fine so tip two is we need to replace this stimulant in your life with something else i used breath work there's this amazing app called breath work without the o i'm not sponsored by them i just really love what they do the idea behind it is with breath work, we can actually manipulate whether our body's in a sympathetic, which is a fight or flight state. Imagine jumping out of an airplane, that's how it'd be, or a parasympathetic state, which is a rest and digest. And just by controlling our, our inhalation and exhalation. And then the final tip that I have is give yourself some downtime, man. Um, this was really, really, really hard for me. Uh, and it's still something I'm struggling with. So I just want to pause the video here for one second to really drive this point home. This is extremely important if you want, one, this experiment to work, and two, you don't want problems in your life like what I'm facing right now. So I just got some results back from a hormone test that I'm doing, and turns out my testosterone is way lower than someone of my average age. It's an issue, especially for men's health, and it can be for women as well. There's so many hormones throughout the body that need to be regulated. The huge issue here though is I wasn't treating my eating routine or wind down routine seriously. I'm having lower testosterone because I'm getting two peaks of cortisol. So it's rising twice instead of just once which it should be coming down the rest of the day once it peaks. Why? Because I'm working late into the night, even though I'm going to bed at 10 p.m., I'm working until like 9 p.m. doing little tasks here and there. I feel relaxed, I don't feel stressed at all, but the tests show otherwise. So actually take this one seriously. I've realized I now have to, uh, but please learn from my mistakes. Growing up, I, I loved Casey Neistat, I loved a lot of these like grind until you're dead mentality guys. Um, and it's just not sustainable. I've realized about myself. One, I don't want to be doing that. Two, because I actually want to enjoy my life. And two, like to actually grow, you need to rest. For example, the gym, right? If you're always working out, you're actually growing your muscles when you're sleeping. So the same thing, if I wanted to be alert and ready to go for work or whatever I was doing that day, I needed to properly rest. And watching YouTube videos is not properly resting, by the way. Uh, I, th I thought it was for the longest time, but it's not. There's still so much stimuli on the screen going on. So some of the things I've been trying in my life to kind of figure this one out is having a hard stop in my day and then having an extended evening routine where I'm just kind of chill out, turn down the lights, put on some candles, uh, read some fiction books. Right now I'm reading Ender Game. Oh my God, such a good book. So to wrap all of this up, I recommend using Notion. 
I love Notion. Notion is my baby. Uh, it is my second brain. Everything is on there. My planning, my actions for the day, my learning, my thinking, my inbox, whatever you can think of. I want to introduce you guys to this and I've made a template for you guys so you can start tracking. There's this amazing quote by Peter Drucker. It says, what gets measured gets managed. And we have to understand that as humans, we think we're so smart, but we're actually quite infallible, meaning that we play tricks on ourselves. We think we're doing something, but we're actually not. So for example, with myself, I thought I was like three weeks into it, but I was only like 15, 15 this days. Um, and it, it just it's just really hard to actually meet goals when you're not tracking things. So that's the first thing that you guys are gonna have. Second is there's an action items list of things that you need to get done that I've mentioned in this video. So all the notes are already there, good to go for you in Notion and you can just check them off as you go along. And then the last thing I wanna just stress one more time is I seriously do highly recommend using Breathwork. It really was a game changer for me just because I needed something to replace that stimulant in my life. I know a lot of you guys are gonna kind of think like, oh, this is some woo woo stuff, it doesn't work. It works, it really does. Um, try at least two cycles and you'll see, you will see. Uh, try Energize 2.0 if you really don't wanna believe me. That will just take you to the moon. <laughs> you will not be tired at all. By the way, my opinion of coffee is that I think it's great. More so, I think everyone should be consuming less of it. And Ali Abdal does a really good job of breaking down some various research papers to kind of debunk whether coffee is good or bad for you. Uh, I'm gonna link his video down below. Also, um, this is something I got uh, raised to me really recently, but I wasn't aware that in North America, the standards for checking mold in coffee is like, just not as good. Uh, North America is a second tier market, so all the bad coffee that doesn't get accepted into Europe and Japan, because their standards are like crazy high, um, gets sent over to us. So a lot of the times there's mold particles in our coffee. Imagine eating moldy food. It's the same thing and it's not okay for you. There's also a video down below uh, from Bulletproof kind of explaining that. All right, so that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I absolutely loved making it. And I wanted to let you guys know, everything I mentioned in the video is down below in the description. And also my socials are down there. So feel free to follow me on Instagram. I usually post more of the stuff that I'm making at the moment, more of the behind the scenes. So I'd love to see you guys on there. Or if you just wanna DM me, that's the best place to do it. Also, if you have any comments, opinions, recommendations, please comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.